Hey everybody, W here with another Stratego game analysis. In this game, we're going to do our three major attack uh, series, where we attack with our three majors and three scouts at the start of the game, and we try to find information and then take as many low pieces as possible to uh, uh, to then develop a plan how to counterattack and come back from behind and win the game. It's an exciting way to play. Sometimes you get real lucky early and, and can wipe out your opponent's army. Other times you, you find very little information and it becomes a long, hard uh, game to try to come back and win. So let's get started. I'm playing a silver major here with slightly more wins and losses. So let's get, get going. We'll go right to the game. Now, what, it, what I have to do is... I, I can use my scouts, uh, one scout in each lane, and, and then I have to use my majors to attack everything I can to find the marshal. Once I find the marshal, I can play a normal game. If I don't find the marshal with this major or this major or this major, then you just have to repeat until you run out of your majors. And then you look where you stand, and then you have to try to figure out how you can come back and win the game with the pieces you've captured and the information you, you've gained. And a lot of times you're down one, two, or even three majors. And it is a fun challenge to try to come back and win the game. A lot of times uh, beginners have the hardest time uh, understanding how to play from behind. I hope these games will help you learn how to play from behind and also how to learn to play with a big lead because a lot of players don't know how to do that either. So let's get started and we'll talk about more about the uh, major attack strategy as we go along. So I'm not finding much information with my scouts. That was nice to find a bomb here. Now this game is sped up 200% because I played really slow here. Now this, this strategy is, is, is very, uh, uh, if you don't have a good memory, it, it's very hard to win playing this way. Because the games can be very long and you have to really concentrate on what pieces your, your majors will reveal or if you run into a bomb. So if you find a cap, I mean, if you find a um, colonel or general or marshal, you have to remember it. The other thing is every single one of your pieces is important. You can't leave pieces hanging. You can't uh, let pieces die in vain. They're all so important. So they have to give you information or you have to get pieces because you're going to be behind in the game. And, and you can't, you don't want to go too far behind in the game. Being down three majors is is bad enough so we find the general so we have to remember that so if this was a marshal I would play a normal game but since this is a general I have to keep on attacking with my majors now if a piece would slip by and come down here I can attack it with any of these pieces, but I can't advance with these pieces until my majors are gone or until the marshal is found. So we found a general and a colonel. And we found a bomb. So unfortunately, this was not not a good uh, setup for us to attack. I'm down three majors. I found the general and the colonel. And I only gained a minor and six scouts. And I'm down three scouts. So this is not too looking too good. But we think maybe the marshal, if the general was here... 
Maybe the Marshall could be here. You want to think maybe symmetrical setup. He has two bombs here. So maybe he has an open flag. Uh, this might be the weak side, even though the Marshall might be over here. And I think he might have an open flag. Usually when, when people have bombs on the front row, I think they tend to have open flags. But that's just a general assumption. So that's what we're going to be, be uh, looking for with our Stratego patterns. So now the goal is to try to, well, we really want to find the marshal. It's really hard to win this game when you don't find your opponent's marshal. So we got to try to find the opponent's marshal. And now we also want to start bleeding lower pieces. We want to start trying to get captains, lieutenants, and sergeants because he's going to want to protect his lead and he's going to bring up crappy pieces to try to find your high pieces. And now the most important thing to come back in any game is to keep your high pieces hidden as long as possible. If your marshal gets revealed, it's going to be incredibly difficult to come back and win. And and then, you know, uh, if your other high pieces are revealed, he'll try to come in and swap with those pieces. And then you might not have time to make up your... your um, uh, major deficit there so you have to keep your high pieces hidden and then you want to try to bleed all these lower pieces he's going to come in testing you'd like to get rid of his scouts because once his scouts are gone then you can move freely with your with your march or you can move up and if your plan seems to fail you can always move back without the marshal being revealed you can move your spy around without it being attacked from a distance so that's always good if you can get all their scouts and then, but basically, you want to try to be ahead at the end of the game, uh, captains, lieutenants, and uh, miners, and, and sergeants. That's the whole goal, to get ahead with the lower pieces, and then maybe get, uh, you know, one or two of the majors back. And then if you have enough of these lower pieces, you can wind up winning the game. Uh, they call that bleeding the opponent, because you're just, you're just, uh, getting drops of small blood from the opponent here until until they d basically die. Uh, they finally bleed out. And uh, it it's a very effective strategy if you have a really good memory and you have a lot of patience. And I'm not that good at it yet, but uh, it is a lot of fun. Uh, I know there's, there's probably several players that are pretty good at uh, attacking with this major strategy. I think Colonel Mustard was pretty good. I think he was very aggressive with his majors. Uh, Manning to Cruz is is just excellent at, at using his majors. And then I think Astros is pretty good at uh, uh, doing this strategy, attacking with majors. So it is a lot of fun to try out. You might want to try it out on the computer game Heroic Battle. Try playing Heroic Battle by just losing one major at first and then seeing if you can win. Then try losing two majors and then see if you can win and then try doing what I did here attacking with three majors and see if you can win with the information you gained and the pieces you've gained now ideally I'd like to have like two captains and maybe two lieutenants and a sergeant and you'd like to have like four or five uh, a lead with four or five of these pieces already at the start after you lose your three three majors but unfortunately, that's not the case here. All right, let's continue here. It's going to be a fairly long game. So I decided to open up this bomb side. And see, he's already bringing up garbage. That's, that's I think, the mistake a lot of players do is, first, they think, they think you're semi-crazy bringing up your majors, that you're very aggressive. So they automatically think that any piece you bring up might be a high piece, like a colonel or or a general so they're very scared so they're going to be bringing up their sergeants and their miners and their lieutenants and that's in this phase of the game is where you want to try to capitalize and and get these pieces to get the lead and i like i like this game too because i can bluff a lot uh that's my strongest uh I think my strongest uh, uh, part of Stratego is my bluffing ability. And this definitely allows you to, to bluff a lot. 
So I, I move the lieutenant out of the way. And that's how bluffs always work. When a piece gets revealed and then you race up with an unknown piece, then then, then uh, that piece gets scared. So you can, you can see he's already worried that I'm coming up with another high piece. So, but I want to see what this is. Remember, we had two bombs here. Because I need to find some targets, too. I need to find the captains and some of his majors. And ideally, you want to get the colonels. So we found another bomb. So this is getting really weird. He has three bombs here. One and the one we took already and this one. So that's, that's looking good that he has an open flag. And I believe with with the Gravon stats, when I analyzed uh, the the eighty five almost eighty five thousand game setups, I think half the time the players had an open flag. So don't worry if you lose all your miners, because there's a you know almost a fifty fifty chance that your opponent will have an open flag. And that's why I always say uh, if you really want to win, bomb in your flag. Uh, I, I uh, you know, I always played with the flag up front, but that was more like a gimmick. But if you really want to win a high percentage of your games, bomb in your flags, and that way you won't lose to a lot of worse. And then you can be more aggressive. All right, so now, uh, let's see, we have bomb, bomb, bomb. And this was a lieutenant. And then he's moving pieces down here. So that's interesting. He's moving pieces in the back row. So we want to try to get these last two scouts. And you, you kind of rush up with like pieces that might look like a high piece because this is coming from behind the lake and you rush up there and then you hope they scout you. And then if they scout you, then you come back and then try to hide back in your side, shuffle around, shift some pieces around, and then come out on the other side and hope you get scouted again. So unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not having much luck here uh, finding a lieutenant and a captain. I'm not finding too much luck finding his marshal. I think this might be his marshal because he's, he's trying to protect it. So he's he's really bleeding me right now. I'm I'm wasting my scouts here. A lot of times you don't have to attack. You just wait and let them attack you, and then you just pull back. So we know that's a lieutenant, and that I think is the marshal because the general was here. I think this is the marshal. Now, this was a captain. I don't have to ta attack it right away. A lot of times you can reposition your board the way you want to. And that's the one thing I like to do in this strategy. I like to fill in the gaps here on the second row. Uh, especially with maybe some known revealed pieces. You just fill in the gaps. And if the game lasts... A long time over 20 20 30 minutes people will tend to forget if this moved or not because i i certainly forget and it seems like a lot of players seem to forget and it, it also ha could happen because a lot of times players will be playing you this might be their third game or fourth game so that can confuse them as well so that's always a good idea to fill in this uh structure here and then uh, they might forget the pieces have moved and they might forget what the pieces were. Uh, I finally take the uh, captain. So we at least we're up a we're up a captain. And you always want to try to see where you stand. So I'm still down three majors. I got a captain back. I'm down two sergeants. And we're up a minor and we're up two scouts. And we do know three of his bombs, so that's good information as well. 
Now, you notice he's been bringing up a lot of uh, garbage pieces. He hasn't brought up any big guns yet. You, you haven't seen many uh, majors or colonels or anything like that uh, coming down here attacking. He's, he's bringing up all scouting pieces. You know you're, you know you're getting into your opponent's head when they start bringing up miners and they're not attacking bombs. They're actually using the miners as a scout. So we think this is a marshal, so we want to check that out with a miner. And we're going to sit here with our colonel, because we know this is a lieutenant and this is a bomb. And hopefully he takes attacks me and then I can run back down. I like to make, say, another garbage piece, and then you just bring it back. And this was a colonel, we know that. So sometimes you have to swap. But we got a captain, so we got two for one with that colonel. Now this piece coming down, at first at first I thought this was a major maybe, but then I changed my mind and said, ah, oh, this has got to be a garbage piece. And I came up here with the miner hoping to see if, okay, so he only, oh, that was great. That was his last scout. So now my big pieces can move around freely and my spy can move around freely. And I was coming up here because I thought this was a major. That's not a bad spot for a major. And then at the then I changed my mind. I was like, nah, that's a garbage piece. And I should have just pulled it back down here and, and, and captured it with my captain. But then I decided I wanted to find out what this marshal, if that was the marshal. And I, I was mad. I, I let him take my miner, and I was right here. I was really uh, as mad as I could get for uh, Stratego. Uh, I was like, because every piece counts. And I, I said, man, that was a garbage piece. I just should have came all the way back and captured it with this captain. So it's a little things like that. In a game like this, when you're down three majors, it's, it's just so huge. Uh, this really is a big, big blunder. I mean, I didn't know it, but he's been coming up with all his all his lower pieces. He's already used three miners and all his scouts, and now he's coming up with uh, sergeants and uh, lieutenants. So I was really mad that he got that miner. So now we get to see what this piece is. And I was kind of shocked he didn't go down here. I thought he would move away. So we find the marshal. And then we get that sergeant. So now we'll look at the score, but now I'm still down uh, three majors. We're up a captain, and we're only down one sergeant now. And we're even on the minors. Both of us are running through our minors. And I have a three scout lead. He has no more scouts, so that's good. So we know the general here, we know the um, lieutenant is here, and the marshal is here. And now you want to try to hide the pieces. You, you know, this piece just captured a sergeant, so you just bring pieces back, and your opponent will forget when you start moving pieces back and forth and shifting pieces and shuffling pieces, uh, your opponent will definitely forget. And especially, he's moving a lot of pieces over here. This is really interesting how he's moving all these pieces over here. And the other thing I like to do I like to make lanes for my colonel so they have escape lanes. I don't want my colonels to be found out unless, you know, I'm getting a, a major or maybe a captain. Uh, so he's bringing this piece from the back. So I don't think this is a big piece at all. It's probably a, a sergeant or something. So we like to run away and... and not uh, get our kernel revealed here so we can run away and have an escape lane and so it was a sergeant 
And then you just keep on repeating doing this. So that's, that's, uh, so we know that's his general. I'm just seeing what he's going to do. So that was interesting. He took me with his, attacked me with his spine, a minor. So now this was unfortunate for me. I didn't get much out of it. And my opponent screwed up here. He probably should have pinned me and swapped. Because he's got a good lead. He's got a three major lead. He should want to swap uh, generals. But he did not do it for whatever reason. He went down. So I'm retreating. But that's good. And now he was coming with a garbage piece. And as he's coming, the sergeants are almost done with. So now he's coming in with the lieutenants. So I'm slowly, I'm starting to get... You know, I'm up a captain, I'm up a lieutenant, we're even with sergeants, I'm up one minor, and I'm up three three scouts, and I'm up a spy, so that's one, four, five, six, I'm up seven smaller pieces, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, and but I'm still down three majors, which is not good, but we know where his marshal is, and we know where his general is, and he doesn't know where my marshal is. That's the most important thing. So I try bluffing here with this captain. And I think he believes it. I think he believes that this is my marshal. Because he backed off with his general. So now I go over here acting like I'm protecting the colonel. And I'm not sure he's been paying attention to what I've been doing because he's been moving a lot of pieces in the middle here, back and forth. So I think he thinks this is my marshal protecting the colonel. So now I run up like I'm coming back to help. And we get his general. So that's great news. But the game is far from over because I'm still down three majors. You know, if we, if we swapped out, I guess I have a lot of lower pieces that would help me. But, you know, with his three majors, I'd still be in a lot of trouble. So I definitely have to still play hard. Uh, it, it, the game is still very much in doubt just because I got his general, because he has those three majors. Now he's coming in with the marshal, and unfortunately, I had to swap. I could have maneuvered here with a spy and, and with my captain and, you know, the marshal comes down, I go up. and But I think this was his colonel, so he could come down here and this had moved, this had moved. So he would be attacking these pieces and I'd be in trouble. And it, it just it just wasn't worth it. It was, I, I saw a lot of problems. You know, he still has three majors. I have to protect this, this, this. And then he might not even, you know, get captured by the spy. So I, I decided to, uh, to uh, swap marshals, even though I did have the spy advantage. Now, the thing I can't do now, he's probably going to be coming in with his colonel, because they usually move their high piece first when their top piece goes off the board. And I have to think about all the pieces that have moved to, so I can protect them. And the other thing I have to do is I do not want to swap colonels. This is a mistake a lot of beginners do. They think, oh, I have the highest piece on the board, the general. Let's swap colonels. But he has a three major lead. And those majors can wreak havoc. And I won't be able to capture them with one high piece. And, you know, unless he's stupid and, and lets me get him with the two square rule. I'm not going to get his majors. So he'll probably win the game. So the most important thing for me now is not to swap colonels. Because I need both the general and the colonel to uh, trap his majors to get back into the game. So I can win the game. Now, unfortunately, these captains are in a lot of danger, you know, because he does have three majors. And I really don't want to go down. I'm up a, I'm up a captain. I don't want to go down, captains. 
if possible. So he desperately wants to get my colonel. Or we're going to get that stop chasing and he has to do something else. So I thought that was interesting. I thought this piece, I'm not, I, this, I think this colonel was known, but he forgot, maybe he forgot what it was. But if this was a major, it, it, he's acting like he's scared of this piece. So maybe he thinks this was my general. I wasn't sure. I thought, you know, he didn't know what it was. And it looked like he was moving away. And that pissed me off. I was like, damn it. He, I said, he, he, he lauded my captain. So then I tried bluffing him here. And wow, that was a painful, let's watch that. That was a painful, painful, uh, few few minutes here he lotters my captain and then i try a bluff sometimes i bluff too much but he did forget the marshal i just wanted to see if he would forget the uh if it was a general or not so now we're down a captain and we're down three majors which is not good I'm hoping this is a major so I can trap it. And it wasn't. So that's not too good. So now I have to bring my general back to help uh, my current uh, captain out here. To stop his colonel from capturing my captain. So I'm thinking he's bring, finally bringing down the major. And now I do this two square roll that I'm in trouble here with the scout. And I hope he takes a scout, and then I hope he decides to go down and hit this bomb. That's why I did that. I wanted to get in front of this bomb, so then when he takes me, he goes down. But he doesn't do it. He, he doesn't attack this right now. So the next thing I want to do is we got to get some pieces back because he's... You know, he, he lauded my captain, so I got to get a piece back. So I'm going to target this piece here with my spy and put the colonel here. This is a bomb, so I can get the spy to this spot. And we can capture what this is. You know, you almost could attack it without even scouting. Uh, because it just would be seem weird to have bomb. One, two, three, four bombs like that. But I have the spy. I might as well do that. And I'm hoping it's better than a sergeant because usually you have a sergeant guarding the bomb. So maybe it's a major or a captain. So that's a plan right now. I think he knows I'm going to target this. And I was pissed again. Son of a gun. He, he lottoed again. He's getting pretty lucky at lottoing. Got my captain, and now got my lieutenant. And he lotted again, got my minor. So he's gaining all the lower pieces back. 
So we did find a captain, which is great. So, but now I only have one miner left, unfortunately. But it looks like he might not have a, a, a closed flag. All these pieces are open. Now, the marshal was on this side, so he could have a flag in the corner. But that's usually rare, I think, when you have bombs over here and then have the flag in the corner. Uh, I think that's usually rare. Uh, so now we have to try to figure out how to trap these, these majors to get back into the game. This is probably a major coming down. He wants to get this captain. Or at least just put pressure on me. And I thought about it. I thought, you know, he's up three majors. I think that wouldn't be so bad taking this captain right now to make the pieces uh, less in the game. Even if, even if uh, he loses a major for the captain, then he will have a captain lead too, as well as a major lead. Uh, uh, as a major lead, so I think that would would have been a good move for him to to do that. But he did not want to sacrifice his major. He did not. He did not want to do it. So now he lotto's into this bomb, and this bomb is great because I like this bomb because most of the time you have bomb here and a bomb here with a flag or sergeant in the corner, and this usually is open, but. This time it was not. I think, I think these two spots are the least likely to have a bomb on the, this row. So that's why these bombs are, are really effective. So now we're only down two majors, so it's looking a little bit better. And I'm trying to figure out the bomb pattern here where, where his flag could be. Oh, now he finally took the bait. So now see... That's the problem with lottoing. You win some, you lose some, right? He was doing really well, getting the captain, getting the lieutenant, and and getting the minor. But now he lost both his majors to uh, well-placed bombs. And this is another effective bomb. Bombs in the corner are also really effective. I don't like putting them in both corners, but at least in one corner, uh, because that's the least likely spot for a bomb on the, on the uh, back row. So... That turned out pretty good. So now I'm only uh, one major down. And he takes my last minor. So now I have to hope that his flag is not uh, closed here. And, and now what do I have to worry about? Well, I have to worry about a minor coming down on this side. Right? He has one minor left. So I, I need to get my captain basically over in this lane to block any miners coming down this way. So, because he could always swap with my colonel, you know, if my general goes away, he could swap with my colonel and then a miner could sneak in there and you don't want that happening. Now I'm assuming this is his this is his uh major. And he made the mistake. What he should have done, this piece came from the back row, but he moved a lot of pieces, so that's not where it originated from. But he probably would have been better off moving up the captain. And I would have believed it to be the major. And then he should have left the major down here. And then he could have got my captain with the major. He could have chased he could have chased my captain with his captain, and he would have captured it with the major. But see, a lot of bronze, silvers, and low gold players, they use their high piece first, and then they use the lower piece uh, as the second piece. And that's exactly what he did. So, And then he the, the, the previous two pieces he moved up front were major. So you assumed that he was going to bring another major, and that's exactly what he did. So this is his last major. You have the colonel pinned. So I want to get this captain on this side because I don't know where his minor is.
Okay, we're going to pause the video. I want you to think of, as, as Mato would say on the chess channel, think of what is the killer move here. What would you do? What would you move? And why would you move it? If you can figure this out, then you're starting to understand Stratego patterns and how to win in Stratego. What should I move? What piece should I move and where should I move it? Pause the video and think for a few seconds and see if you can figure it out. All right, the move here, this is his major. The move I have to do, really, is I have to, first to protect from a lotto if he goes straight down. But I want to move to here and then I effectively capture his last major because he will be trapped. I can just bring then the colonel around this way, come back down, and the major will be lost and he won't be lottoing anything. So that's the move you want to do. And I don't think my opponent knows it until about right now. He's like, oh no, my last major is lost and I can't get any pieces with it. He didn't even lotto anything with it. So he's going into his buffer saying, darn it, he's probably cursing now. So his three major lead has evaporated. It took a while. Now, I thought this was a captain, but I wasn't 100% sure. So I had to take it because if it was a minor and I moved out of the way, you know, he would have won the game. So now we just play a little cat and mouse here. I try to uh, confuse him a little bit to see if he will forget which is the colonel and which is the general but it's a lot harder when there are fewer pieces. And I don't want him to come down in Lotto because if he, if he came down this way in Lotto, he could do a lot of damage. You know, I'm still hoping he has an open flag. I don't think the flag would be here, but you never know. So we found the fourth bomb, right? We got one, two, three, and four now. So maybe he has bomb, bomb here in the flag. Or, but I, I still don't think that because uh, even though the marshal was on this side, he had a lot of high pieces over here. Uh, I'm beginning to think the flag is this because it's the most popular spot for a flag, always four over from the left. So but what we're gonna do, since we lost uh, our lieutenant, we're gonna target this piece, get our general here, and scout this to see what it is, and then go from there. He's still gonna try to, uh, he wants to get my colonel. It's very close now. We're even on majors, even on captains. He, uh, he has the advantage on lieutenants. We're even on sergeants, and we're... He has one more minor than me, and I have two scouts that he doesn't have. These games are really exciting. A lot of fun. So he basically remembered, he had a pretty good memory remembering which uh, piece was the general and which piece was the colonel.
So I don't think the miner was over here or else it would have it would have come forward. This probably was a bomb too. So that's a lieutenant, so we want to get that. I don't want him to get my colonel, so we'll use the general as a shield there. And now I'm thinking, oh, this could be this could be a miner. Okay. I do screw up this ending here. We get the lieutenant, so now we're we're even on captains, even on lieutenants, even on sergeants, and he has one miner, and I have two scouts. What I should have done is I should have brought this this uh, lieutenant all the way over and stop this all, uh, at the pass there. You know, get my general back. I should have gone this way. So I'm thinking this was a miner. So now we're going to test this. Oh, so this was a sergeant. So this is weird. He has he has a lieutenant and a miner left. And this this turns out to be his lieutenant. And I was mad I didn't cut him off here. So he has a sergeant here. So where would his miner be? I I think I wish this uh, game would, uh, at the end of the game, the pieces would be revealed so you would know where the f final pieces were. But I believe, I believe he bombed in his minor. Well, let's, let's see the ending of this game here. And that was the last piece on the back row to fly. This was a bomb, this was a sergeant. I figured it was worth a gamble because this is the most popular spot for a flag. And my Gravon stats say it's like 88% chance that the flag goes on the back row, but I think that's a little skewed because a couple of players that were really good had their flag on the second row and they played hundreds and hundreds of games, so they skewed it a little bit. So I think it's more than over 90%, 92% or something that the, the flag is on the back row. So this was worth it for me to, uh, and it's the most popular spot for a flag. But I'm just thinking it was kind of weird, his uh, setup at the end, having a sergeant here, and I assume these two were bombs. And then, so he had bomb, 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 minor bomb, I think. It, it would be stupid to have four bombs here because if a miner came down here, the miner, if it attacked this first, right? If this was a bomb, if the miner attacked this and attacked this, it would get two bombs and then a miner. That's, you know, that's terrible Stratego uh, setup if you had that. So, but I think his problem was he made a terrible mistake uh, and you never, ever want to do that. I would never, ever bomb in a piece because you can see how important in this game was. He needed that last miner, and I didn't open up. If it was here, I'm assuming it was here. You know, maybe it was here, and he just never decided to go for it. I don't know. But uh, I'm glad I got the victory here. That was a that was a very tough game. Uh, playing with the with the three major attack. So yeah, once we found the sergeant, and then we just moved over and, and got got the flag. So that, that was a really good win, because you know, at the start of the game here, when we when we when we hit that bomb, right, we were down three majors and we didn't get a whole lot out of it. We did find the general and colonel, but we only got a minor and, and I guess three scouts. The other scouts got the other so that wasn't looking too good. And then it didn't look too promising when he w went on that lotto spree. I mean, I helped him out here. That was the other key. Uh, 
where was it when he when he lottoed uh where was that oh yeah this was this was when i when i got too crazy bluffing here when he lottoed my captain and then then i bluffed my captain as a general and he remembered it was over here so yeah that wasn't too good either even though i did have his general you know he went he still had his three major lead and now he had a captain lead so yeah that wasn't looking too good either but that just shows you how you can come back uh you know, he, he uh, brought up all his low pieces and I started gaining on him. And then, then he got a little bit desperate when I got his general. I think he panicked. He really didn't have to lot it with his majors. I think he just panicked. Uh, but he got lucky for a while. But that's the problem with lottoing. You, you can only be lucky, uh, you know, so far. And eventually it catches up with you. And, and you know, the best lotterers might might make it to mid gold level range maybe uh you really have to use common sense strategy to uh really move up the leaderboard it's only going to get you so far lottoing so anyway this is uh game one of the uh major attack series i think you should, you should try uh doing this try first playing heroic battle try attacking with one major Get information and then play a normal game. Then try with two majors and then try with three majors until you can beat Heroic Battle three or four or five games in a row. And then try playing against uh, your opponent. Try just losing one marshal maybe in the center. Scout the center. See if you can find a captain. And then take that with your major. And then try to figure out if they take it with a general. Try to figure out, well, if the general's on this side, maybe the marshal's over here. And it, it it's, it's like a big... Uh, the Stratego board setup is like a big Sudoku puzzle. You have to get information to fill in the pieces to figure out where the other pieces are. And, you know, when you play this enough, when you play this, you know, hundreds or thousands of games, you're eventually going to become a master at figuring it out. You'll, you'll be amazed at how right you are reading your opponent's pieces, especially on the lower levels. Uh, it gets a little bit harder when you when you start playing the really high platinum level players, and it can be hard playing you know real uh, newbies, real beginners because they they really don't know how to play yet, so their setup might be totally, totally uh, ridiculous. So, but anyway, this is the uh, how you play the uh, three major attack game. It's a lot of fun and it helps you learn how to play from behind, and I think. You know, it's it's a valid strategy. I don't know about maybe using all three majors, but maybe using just two majors, uh, going down two majors isn't so bad. And I think you could get a lot of information. Now, the way I do it is I'm forcing myself to use a major. So even when the sides are bombed off, I'm forced to run up with a major. I'll show you a game where I had to run past the colonel, a known colonel, but, you know, that's the way the game is. I'm... I'm uh, going to uh, lose the majors unless I find the marshal. So that gives the opponent a, a good chance of beating me. All right, I hope you learned something this game. I think this these uh, series of games will definitely help you learn how to play from behind. All right, thanks for watching. Bye for now.